In this video, I'm going to be talking about kinematic curves, how to analyze shapes, directions, and locations of curves. In physics, when studying kinematics, you may get a word description or a word problem where you have to translate that into a graph, or you may get a certain graph, such as a velocity versus time graph that you have to translate into a position versus time graph or an acceleration versus time graph. So there's a lot of different combinations of things that you may have to do. But to understand every kinematic graph, you want to understand what each of the shapes, directions, and locations mean and what they represent as far as the motion goes. So we're going to take a look at each of these types of graphs and we're going to talk about how all of those things relate to the meaning of the actual motion itself. So when we take a look at the shape, we're going to take a look if it's straight, curved, flat, as far as the direction goes, whether it's upward or downwards flat, or in some cases towards or away that from the x-axis, and then also the location as well. Where is your line? Is it above or below the x-axis? So let's start with our position versus time graph. Our position versus time graph is telling us the position at every any given point in time of the object or thing that's in motion. If anything is rising on the graph, that just means that it's moving in the positive direction if anything is becoming lower on the graph, that means it's just moving in the negative direction, but that doesn't tell us anything about how fast or slow they're going. Now let's take a look at the different types of shapes that you might see. If you see a flat curve or a flat line on your graph, that means that the object is not moving at all. It's at rest. So if the line is flat anywhere along the graph, that still means the position stays constant, which means the object isn't moving at all. Now, if the object is moving, but the line is straight, that means you would have an object that's moving at a constant velocity. Because remember, the slope on a position versus time graph tells you what the velocity is. So in any graph, the slope is telling you about the rate of change, and this is the rate that the position changes per time, which is the velocity. And then this is a constant slope, which means that it's moving at a constant velocity. And again, the only difference between these two blue lines is just the direction because anything that's rising on the graph is moving in the positive direction and anything that's becoming lower on the graph just means it's going in the opposite direction. Now, the last type of shape that you will typically see in a position versus time graph is something that is curved. So the word curve doesn't necessarily mean the shape of it is curved. Um, a curve is just referring to any line that's on a graph, whether it's straight or flat. So now we're actually talking about shapes that are actually curved on the graph. So there are various types of curves you'll see, um, but for the most part, there's pretty much only two, and they look something like this. So we have a few different types of curves here. Let's pay attention to the purple one first. So the purple one is doing the same sort of thing, um, whether it's rising or falling. And what you wanna take a look at is if you're looking at accelerated motion, you're for sure gonna have a curved line. Um, and we know this because if the slope is changing, it's gonna create some kind of curve. 
And if the slope is changing, that means the velocity is changing, which means the object is accelerating. So if it's flattening out, that means the slope is becoming um, progressively closer to this one, which is at rest. So it's heading towards zero, which means um, the value of the slope is decreasing, which means that the object is slowing down. So this one is slowing down in the negative direction, and this one is slowing down in the positive direction. And our final one is the one in orange. That's one that becomes progressively steeper. The steeper the slope, the greater the rate of change, which means that its velocity is becoming greater and greater, which means the object is speeding up. So this one is speeding up in the positive direction, and this one is speeding up in the negative direction. So depending on your scenario, um, you have to think about what the slope is supposed to look like. Is it supposed to be straight? Is it supposed to be curved? In which direction it's heading? Now let's move over to our velocity versus time graph. So the rules for the velocity versus time graph are very different than the position versus time graph because it's telling you how fast it's moving at any given time. So this is just telling you the position. This is just spotting um, how far you're at from the origin. This is telling you how fast you're going. So it's gonna be very different as far as um, the rules go. So for our second graph, to recognize whether it's going in the positive or negative direction, you just take a look at whether it's above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So anything below, which means a negative velocity, that would represent any type of line on here that's becoming progressively lower. And then for anything that's above here means it's a positive velocity. That means anything on here that's rising up on the graph. Now, we're going to use some terms that are going to be a little bit different for our velocity versus time graph. So any line that's flat is going to be moving at a constant velocity. So it could be something that looks like this. Like this or something that's right on the actual x axis itself. So all of them are moving at a constant velocity. This is a constant positive velocity. This is a constant negative velocity. And a constant velocity of zero would mean it's at rest. So the only point where you can possibly represent something at rest is right on the actual x-axis itself. All right, now if we're taking a look at something that's accelerating, remember something that's accelerating means that its velocity is changing. So we are trying to distinguish between whether it's speeding up or slowing down. On the position versus time graph, to distinguish between those two, we took a look at whether it was flattening out or getting steeper. Now for the velocity versus time graph, it's gonna be a little bit more simple. We just wanna know if the number is getting greater or smaller. But remember, negative in physics just means in the other direction. So something that has a greater negative number is actually moving faster, but just in the other direction. So in order to identify something that's going faster, uh, something that's going faster would just be something that is moving away from the X axis. And then for slowing down, slowing down again, um, we want something that has a decreasing velocity. So it could start over here and then it's gonna work its way towards the x-axis. Okay, now this can be a little confusing because a lot of times when people think of, you know, speeding up, they hear the word up, they look for something that's literally moving upwards and if for slowing down, they're literally looking for something that's moving downwards. Okay, so something can be speeding up and it could be a positive slope or a negative slope. As long as it's moving away from zero, this is get, getting progressively faster in the positive direction. And for this orange line over here, it's getting progressively faster in the negative direction. Same thing with slowing down. You can have a positive slope or a negative slope. So if you take a look at the purple line here, the one that's slowing down, If it's heading towards zero, that means it's getting closer and closer to becoming at rest. So 
again, you don't take a look at the actual slope, whether it's a positive or negative slope. You just take a look at if it's moving towards or away from the x-axis or towards away from zero meters per second. So this one is starting out at a fast negative velocity and getting progressively slower and moving towards zero. And this one is starting at a high positive velocity and decreasing and again, also heading towards zero. Now moving to our very last one, the acceleration versus time graph tends to be the least complicated um, because um, when studying high school physics, you typically don't get into um, too much change in acceleration. We're mostly just taking a look at constant acceleration. So for an acceleration versus time graph, it just tells you how fast the acceleration is changing per time. So from our velocity versus time graphs, the slopes tell you the acceleration from this graph. So we saw that how fast the position changes per time represents the velocity and how fast the velocity changes per time represents the acceleration. So for our very last one, um, there's not too much going on here. Um, we have a line basically above zero, on zero, or below zero. So for our acceleration versus time graph, um, this one doesn't get very complicated as far as shapes go. So typically, if you're just translating a velocity versus time graph to an acceleration versus time graph, you just simply have to take a look at the slope. On this graph here, we have no changing slopes. They're all constant slopes. We only have changing slopes over here where it's curved. So if we were to translate um, this orange line right here, into the acceleration versus time graph. This is a constant positive slope. So that's a constant positive acceleration. Okay, just like this purple line over here. It's a constant positive slope. So constant positive acceleration. Okay, and this positive acceleration could technically mean speeding up or slowing down. If something is already positive and you're adding a positive number to it, then it's gonna get progressively larger in the positive direction. If something is negative and you add a positive number to it, it's going to decrease that negative number and make it head towards zero. So basically the rule is if you just take a look at the slope for the velocity versus time graph, that will be represented on your acceleration versus time graph without too much um, in-depth thinking from there. For example, if you have any sort of flat line that is a zero slope, that means a constant velocity. Therefore, there's no acceleration every single type of constant velocity curve is going to be represented right on the x-axis over here. And then for negative acceleration, it works similarly to the positive acceleration, as in if there's anything with a constant negative slope, such as this purple line here, or this orange line here, it's going to be represented by a straight line and a flat line underneath the x-axis on the acceleration versus time graph. So those were a lot of rules, a lot of different shapes, a lot of different things to look at for each of these graphs. So when translating from one graph to another, those are just a lot of different things to consider and think about, whether you're reading a word problem or translating one graph to another. These are a bunch of different ideas that you can use to help you um, interpret the information and then hopefully accurately develop the graph that you need. I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.